Promises have been made, but have they been delivered? Find out tonight as we take another look at the subtech from Kangertech with the new OCC coils, the organic cotton coils. Are they up to the task or are they going to fall short? Stay tuned to find out. Hello everyone and welcome back to this edition of the Vapor Chronicles. I, this is sort of like a re-review. I'm not going to break down the Kangertech sub-tank the way I did on my initial review of the prototype. One of the cool things about the current state of affairs in the vaping world is that these companies that are producing these products are listening to your feedback, they, they listen to the, the comments in these sections, and they're doing revisions. Kangertech made a smart move. When I reviewed the sub-tank, I really liked that the flavor was good, it, it was a great performing tank, but there were some issues. One of the issues was the uh, diameter of the tank. A big tank's nice for juice capacity, but 25 millimeters is really tough because some of the devices, like the DNA 30 devices, the, the well in the bottom of it for the 510 connection is too deep and it's not wide enough to fit this, so it wasn't firing. They've remedied that. All the production sub-tanks are now gonna come with a uh, adapter that screws on the bottom of the tank seamlessly and it fits perfectly, it looks very good, and it works well. So that's gonna come with it, so that problem is solved. The other thing that they did was the bottom plane dual coils have been changed. They scrapped them, they weren't performing as well as they wanted. One of the issues I had with them was not the flavor and it wasn't, you know, they were enjoyable, but the airflow, it was just awkward how it sucked air from the bottom and the air comes into the tank from the side. So it was kind of con contradicting itself uh, with airflow. So they came out with a new OCC, which is the organic cotton coils. And I received them in the mail. I got a 1.2 ohm and a 0.5 ohm. Tonight, I'm gonna look at the 0.5 ohm and I'm gonna put it on the IPV uh, V2S or IPV2S and I'm gonna give it a vape. But let's take a close look real quick at the new coil and then we'll come back out and I'll give you my analysis. We'll see how it vapes. We'll okay, so here we are. Um, many of you remember, or if you haven't seen it, uh, check out my um, breakdown review. I'm not going to break down every single component in the uh, <clears throat> sub-tank because it has been done already by me. So you can check out my previous review of the prototype build. And uh, I'm only going to look at what is different about this version that I got. So let's take a look first at the original coil, uh, which was the 0.5 ohm coil from Kangertech. This was the bottom plane dual coil, and this is no longer being made. This is the original design with the juice channels, and the airflow came from the bottom. The reason why I'm showing you this is because I want to show you what changes Kangertech has made to the new coil. Here is the new coil. So you can see OCC, which stands for Organic Cotton Coil, 0.5 ohm, 15 watt to 30, Kangertech. Notice the airflow. So it actually goes around the entire bottom here from the side, not from the bottom like the old one. Notice the juice, one side and the other side. Also the gasket for the chimney is at the top here, inside, not to the other side. So let's turn this sideways, you can see there's the rubber, and there's the coil horizontally tucked with the juice going to each side. It's pretty simple, but there you have it. They also sent me a 1.2 ohm to go with it. And I'd be doing a disservice if I didn't show you how this compares to the Aspire coil. So it looks like the juice channels are very similar, maybe a little bit larger on the Kanger, but there's more of them in the Aspire. The airflow is bigger here, but there's only two openings whereas on the Kanger, it's open all the way around pretty much. And as you can see, the overall size of the two coils, they're very similar. Um, 
This is more rounded, this is more square. This one's a little bit longer because the chimney is a lot longer up top. But internally, they're very similar, I think, in their dimensions for juice capacity. So there you go. So let's do this. Let's grab this coil. Let's screw it in. And we're going to fill up our tank. So let's grab some juice. One of the cool things about this tank is that it is really, 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 really easy to fill. So we're just going to take it from the top and we're going to start filling. And you just start pushing it on, get the threads on and you'll get a seal. Nice and snug. Let it flip over and I'm going to give it a couple primer pulls and let this juice, uh, this juice saturate, you know, a lot into the coils and I will zoom back out and we'll take a look at how it vapes. I'm actually very excited and I'm anticipating an improvement uh, in airflow, especially from the previous iteration of the coil and uh, hopefully the flavor still holds up the way it did and um, hopefully it, it, it gets a good flow going. So hang tight and we'll be right back. All right, welcome back. So as you can see, this was a huge overhaul. They changed the entire design of that interesting but flawed uh, coil design from the previous. And it's larger, it has larger um, uh, airflow. And I can tell you right away, just by pulling on this, the airflow is much, much, much improved. So that's, that's the first thing. So you still have the rebuildable portion, which I thought was far superior than the pre-built coils. So let's start off at a respectable 30. We're gonna start off at the recommended uh, setting, which is 30 watts, 4.3 volts, and this is reading at 0.6 ohms. So let's see how this vapes and uh, I'll let you know what the flavor and everything else is. So these are just light poles. They did it. These coils are awesome, awesome. So whatever they've done, the bigger coil, the better uh, juice flow. I'm not getting any dry hits. It's a nice, the biggest thing that I notice is the flavor. The flavor is absolutely phenomenal. The vapor production is much, much more than the last coils. Uh, but let's turn it up. So let's go up to 40 watts. Awesome. So as you can see, it's still producing a ton of vapor. The flavor is even better. Um, this coil rocks. Um, let's take a risk. Now, whenever I turn this up to 50 watts, uh, you want to be a little bit careful. So what I like to do is do a little bit of a, a little primer pull. I don't want to burn the cotton that's in here, um, but we'll see if it can take it. It might not be able to, so let's find out. ton of vapor. It's getting a little warm and I can tell the coil was drying up just a little bit toward the end there. So I would say 45 watts would be the maximum that I would be comfortable vaping this at. So let's get down to 45. By the way, they recommend 30 watts. So I'm just trying to see what the limits are to the coil.
So it's really, really good. Um, I love it. You know, the tank, it's big. So if you're not into a big tank or you want it to sit perfectly flush with your device without any kind of overhang, even though it does come seamlessly into the new adapter, this might not be the tank for you. If you want quality, if you want flavor, if you want tank juice capacity, this is going to be an awesome tank for you. I, you know, and also you can rebuild with it. So it's, you know, the pluses far outweigh the negatives on this tank. Um, let's take it off. Actually, you know what? No, let's turn it down to 30 watts. And everybody is really high. And by the way, this is in no way a put down to the Aspire Atlantis tank. The Aspire Atlantis tank is awesome. And I have one. But at the same time, you know, this needs to get the credit it deserves if it deserves it. So this is 30 watts. This is 30 watts. Same juice, same juice. Let's take a hit of the Atlantis tank, full open, 30 watts, and see the vapor production, and I'll tell you about the flavor. We'll get it warmed up a little bit. So there's a nice deep pull at 30 watts. Let's do another one. And let's do the sub tank at 30 watts. And we'll do the same pull. So I would say that they're almost identical in terms of uh, vapor production. The sub tank draw is not as good as the Atlantis. But the Atlantis full open is like breathing air. So a lot of people don't like that. I know a lot of people that I, uh, you know, have talked to, they might turn it down one click. So this is comparable to probably down two clicks on the Atlantis in terms of airflow. But flavor, so the Atlantis flavor is great. This is ridiculously good. So. It's a full, saturated, amazing vape. So Kanger made a great decision, redesigning their coil. They have a winner on their hands with this. So you can't go wrong with either, you can't go wrong with both. I'm just here to give you my opinion, um, my review. I try to be as open-minded. I don't really care what tank you get, personally. I have both. But for, for your hard-earned money, you want to pick one that suits your vaping style. The Kanger's got more tank size, more flexibility. The design is more elegant. Um, it's, it's just a, a brick shithouse build, and it's beautiful. The Atlantis is also beautiful, but it's similar to the Nautilus, which is an awesome tank in terms of its build. Um, you have a lot more capabilities with the own coils, the different coils for the Kanger Tech. You have the rebuildable option, so it's going to it's going to be usable in a lot more uh, scenarios. It's kind of an all-in-one, but it's masterful. So I recommend it highly. Kanger Tech Sub Tank, pick it up. It's going to be out this week, and uh, I really appreciate you watching the Vapor Chronicles. If you're not a subscriber, you can subscribe today. There's going to be a whole lot more new product looks, uh, reviews, and uh, giveaways. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.